got my parents coming in for a few days at the end of the month. This will be the first time in my adult life that they've stayed in my house for any period of time. I, you know, they've come to see me here and there, but they've always hoteled it before. But this time I've got a guest bedroom for them, so I get to play host. And I don't mind saying I'm a little nervous about it. I guess I, I, I probably would be one way or the other, but my stress is compounded because up until now, I haven't exactly told them what I do for a living. See, when I started this show, the whole point of it was anonymity. I started blogging just to have a creative outlet, but I found that I was constantly censoring myself. You know, my parents and grandparents were reading this shit, as were a lot of the kids that knew me from the toy company I worked for at the time. So everything was PG, and I, I, I could never broach topics like religion or politics. And as you can imagine, that didn't stay fun for very long for me. So I gave it up, and I started using a pseudonym to say all the shit that I didn't want my mom to hear. And that was pretty easy to pull off when it was just some blog I was writing in my spare time. But when it became a podcast and a full-time job, it started to creep from omission to dishonesty. So in advance of their trip, I have to come clean. I have to tell my mom that I make my living ignoring her advice about what to do when I have nothing nice to say. So I'm sitting in my office the other day writing my mom a letter, spelling all of this out. Yes, handwriting a letter. I know I'm 106, but whatever. As I'm writing it, I pause and I start looking around the office. Now, at a glance, the words scathing atheist are visible in at least six places. I also have an atheist license plate that a friend and listener gave me. I have a, a shelf full of books with the word atheism in them. I, I have a, a, a few less than amicable bumper stickers and buttons hanging around. And from high atop the bookshelf, a buddy Christ bobblehead overlooks everything. So I, I look around and I think to myself, I should probably tone this down a bit before mom and dad get here. And then I hit myself with a stick because fuck me, a fucking course I shouldn't. Yeah, do, do religious people tone down their religious paraphernalia when atheists come to visit? If they do, I've never seen it. I, 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 you know, I mean, maybe my grandma-in-law usually has 900 Jesus figurines in her house and she just hides 400 of them when we come to see her, but I kind of doubt it. Hell, odds are better than 50-50 that my dad's going to show up wearing a Jesus t-shirt. Now, consider the double standard that exists here. I'm an atheist for a living, right? That, that, that's what I spend my days writing about, talking about, studying about. I, I, I know that we don't have preachers in atheism, but that's like my closest counterpart in the religious world, a person who is religious for a living. So imagine you walk into a preacher's home. You, you probably have at some point. How much Jesus shit did you see there? I mean, sure, I've got an atheist sticker on my car, a couple of atheist T-shirts, a bit of atheist memorabilia hanging around in my office, but how minor of a dusting is that compared to, like, your religious aunt's house? You know, imagine the atheist equivalent. My parents walk in, first thing they see is a giant picture of Darwin tending finches over the fireplace. Very conspicuous copy of the God Delusion sitting open on the coffee table. Another smaller one in the bathroom. Of course, I'm wearing my best bong hits for Jesus shirt. My wife is in her favorite hand-knitted, nothing-fails-like prayer sweater. Big scarlet A on her necklace. Monster on Sundays playing over the speakers while A Better Life is on TV in the background. Little figurines of Madeline Murray O'Hare and Bertrand Russell on the end tables patting down dirt on a grave-marked religion. You know, then they go to the guest bedroom where I've placed a copy of God is Not Great on the bedside table in case they need one. Hand-carved image of the flying spaghetti monster hangs over the headboard across from a lovingly rendered oil painting of Sean Carroll mopping a debate stage with William Lane Craig. So they drop off their luggage, then they head into the kitchen where Sam Harris quotes hang next to embroidered doilies that say, We definitely randomly evolved from protobiotic sludge. And then we all settle in for a home-cooked meal. But first, of course, I lead them in atheist grace. Dear Lord... Thanks for not existing so that we can live our lives without the panoptic fear that all the cruel shit in the world was intentional. Thank you for providing us with the comforting knowledge that the fish that swims up dudes' dick holes and devours them from the penis out was the product of impersonal natural forces rather than the insidious concoction of a magical psychopath that controls every aspect of our fate. Amen. Now, don't misunderstand me here. If I did all of that stuff, if that's what my house did look like when my parents got here, it would be because I'm an asshole. You know, just like your religious aunt decks her house out in Jesus shit because she's an asshole or mentally ill or some combination of the two. But unlike the religious aunt, we're an overlooked minority. We're a minority that gets accused of assholery every time we self-identify. Our very existence offends people. Put a bumper sticker on your car or wear a t-shirt that identifies you as godless and you're downright boorish. Yet through most of this country, you can't go a mile without coming across somebody going out of their way to identify their religious faith. And nobody says, wearing a crucifix, huh? What an asshole. Well, at least outside of Christian movie scripts, and they would say butt face instead of asshole. So yeah, nobody says that. And this double standard is so pervasive that at a glance, I was buying into it. 
You know, I look around my office and thought, yeah, they're right. Announcing to the people that come to my home that I don't find unquestioning devotion to fairy tales laudable, that's a real dick move. And I shouldn't have thought that. I should have known better. And yet it's so thoroughly woven into our culture that I had to think about it for a minute before I gave myself a swift kick in the ass. So fuck it. My mom's been milking that nine months in her womb shit long enough. My office stays how it is. I'm proud of the fight I'm fighting and the person that I am. And I'm not changing a damn thing just because of my parents' religious sensibilities. All right, I, I, I might unimpale the plastic Jesus on the dartboard, but other than that, I'm not changing a thing. And I, and I might still leave him. I haven't even decided yet.